just come back from some very prestigious comedy festivals, 10,000 Laughs, <laughs> the Limestone Comedy Festival. Please give a big hand for Tanner Oliver, ladies and gentlemen, Tanner Oliver, let him hear it. Hey, what's up? Everybody, everybody looks good. Uh, happy post Valentine's Day, y'all sore? I am shit. Uh, yeah, I'm one of those comics. Get ready. Anyway. Uh, what's up? I um every year I, I tend to get my girlfriend the same thing for Valentine's Day. I get her weed and sneakers. No complaints there. She's like, how did you know, baby? How did you know? This is exactly what I wanted. I was like, well, baby, when I met you, you were stoned. And, and you still got feet, so fuck it. Like, let's, just, uh, let's just do the same shit. Every February, where can you find my girlfriend on Valentine's Day? Just going, these are pretty cool. Just... No complaints, no complaints. Uh, yeah, man, uh, before we get into anything else, let's just, let's just get it out of the way. Let's just throw it in the street, call it what it is. Tanner's a pretty white ass name for a black dude, isn't it? It is, uh, I'm dealing with that for a minute. Uh, I'll tell you guys right now, growing up as a black kid with a pretty white name, you gotta deal with other black kids being like, man, we don't wanna hang out with Tanner. He wearing them glasses, he look like he would tell. <laughs> My bad if I'm a concerned friend, shit, you know? You got hit in the face with a two by four. I don't know how to patch you up. We need your mom, Adam. We need your mom. I'm gonna go get your mom. Stop fucking around, all right? I'm gonna ruin my whites. <laughs> Almost blood everywhere, shit. Um, I don't know, it could be worse, you guys. Uh, growing up, like I said, didn't really like my name that much. My mom was like, well, it could have been worse, baby. We almost named you Percy. Mm, gross. <laughs> name is like pickle juice. I don't like it. It's just... <laughs> Nah, not for me, man. Look, I have a, this is my opinion on the name Percy. Uh, I feel like if you're black and your name's Percy, you could be the coolest motherfucker that's ever existed or the weirdest motherfucker that's ever existed. You know, you can be like, hi, my name's Percy Oliver. I collect race cars. I'm just finishing up some wine. Do you want to come indoors? And you're like, what? This guy sounds like the shit. He's great. Or you can be like, hi, my name's Percy Oliver. I collect sensual artworks and firearms. What do you think of this drawing of titties? Like, just... Ugh. Yeah, that was my one joke I wrote on acid, everybody. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Uh, I know what the purple, the color purple sounds like now, so... You've done acid, haven't you? Ah, ah. The goat laugh says so much, y'all. Ah, been there, terrified. Call my mom, fuck. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun, you guys. Uh, I was a fan of having friends with weird names. Uh, growing up, I went to a mostly black high school. I had one Asian friend. These things are not important. Uh, what is important is that my Asian friend's name was Young Ho, you guys. <laughs> and y'all ever been a small Asian child surrounded by black people and your name is Young Ho? <sighs> 06 was a spicy year, y'all. It was... Bullying back and forth on the front lines, it's crazy. We'd be on the bus and be like, I don't understand. <laughs> Young ho means strong dragon in Korean. <laughs> like, well, it means ho here, baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go inside and have a Klondike bar, fuck these people. <laughs> you know? And uh, don't feel too bad for Young Ho. He went to U of M, he got himself a computer science degree. Then he went on to develop an app called Golfler, which allows you to order a beer on a golf course. So Young Ho is rich as fuck now, okay? <laughs> that boy is paid. He's a waterfront property. I went to go visit him two weeks ago. He's got three jet skis called Hoes, Hoes, Hoes. It's doing amazing. <laughs> he didn't even meet me in the driveway. I just, he was just like, come out back. And there he is just riding his jet ski like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I can get my maid to get you a grapefruit juice. Like, just, <laughs> I know, it's crazy, it's crazy, man. Man, making fun of Young O was such an institution, even my mom did that shit once. Like, he came over and he was like, you got any chocolate milk? I was like, fuck yeah, I got chocolate milk. I'm six, of course I have chocolate milk. I'm 16, there we go. 
16 6, get yourself some chocolate milk. I don't know. But uh, I was like, yeah, I got chocolate milk. He's like, all right, man. And then I get him a big glass of chocolate milk. He spills it everywhere. My mom was like, who spilled this milk? And I was like, young ho. She's like, better than my old hoes used to fuck with. So <laughs> that's where I get my sense of humor from, you guys. That's where I get my sense of humor from. Uh, another thing that is uh, happening in my life right now, my grandpa joined me and we both got our medical marijuana cards together, you guys. Uh, I've had mine for like two years. I was renewing and he was just like, you know what? I feel like they're fucking people over with these prices and I hear medical is cheaper. So, you know, I'm a black man looking for a deal. You know what I mean? So, so he went with me and he doesn't like new weed, you guys. It terrifies him. I was like, what, do you, what, what, what was old weed like? He's just like, well, you know, it's the 30s. You just light up the J and, you know, Maybe you see a dog out in the field and you take one puff and you're like, you know what, I hope he's a nice dog. I hope he, <laughs> hope he ain't no mean dog. I hope his home life's good. I hope he's got a nice bark to him. You know, let people know he ain't fucking around. You know, you know fuck it, I hope he's regular too. I hope he shit's nice. And just, you know, just, I hope he's good. You know? And I'm like, whoa. Why don't you like new weed? And he's just like, man, this is new shit. I mean, shit, I, I take one hit and I'll be like, well, I mean, shit, Waldo, are we black or mahogany? I don't know. It's <laughs> this shit right here. It's interesting. It's... I'm sweaty. I'm so sweaty. And, and he's just like, you know, I need to be nice. I need to, I need to uh, pull my blinds up and wave at the neighborhood kids so they don't think I'm that mean black dude who lives on the corner. You know what I mean? Like just, you can come get your baseball, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, his, uh, his favorite show to watch when he's stoned is the Powerpuff Girls. He loves it. Like he'll come on, he'll be like, I'll be like, what do you like about this show? He's like, they got big ass heads, they fight a lot, and there's a monkey, and they just beat that monkey. It's great. It's a simple algorithm. Big heads, fighting, monkeys, I'm here for it. It's great. His only gripe was the show, is he'll be watching it and then he nudged me and he's like, hey man, uh, I think that green one's a dyke. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, like what? What's wrong with you? And then he did old black man math where he's just like, you know, short hair. What you mean? That's a dyke. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, come on. Like, just you clean up your act, man. Shit. I don't know. Could be worse, you guys. Uh, this is not the first time I've ever done stand-up. I remember the first time I ever did stand-up. It's back when I had my first car, you guys. It was a black Volvo station wagon. His name was Denzel Washington. <laughs> <laughs> then I got in an accident with Denzel and the front headlight broke, so from then on it's just Forrest Whitaker. So, uh... <laughs> oh, some, some of you guys are saying, aw, do you know him? Forrest Whitaker's so paid, if he heard that joke, he'd be like, that kid can go fuck himself. He like, just <laughs> doesn't care, you know, shit. I like telling that joke when there's a ton of black women in the front row, because they all give me this look like, you leave our boy alone. <laughs> and, yeah, no, I, uh, so yeah, first time I ever did stand-up, I was 19, they were like, hey, Tanner, do you want to open up for rappers? And I was like, oh, what kind of rappers? And they said, oh, you'll see, which is never good. It's never good. Uh, I don't know if y'all are in entertainment, but when a booker says, oh, you'll see, uh, the check's gonna bounce, or it's a bad neighborhood. Or, dos, it's both, right? Uh, right, so I went to the bar, and uh, I thought I was gonna open up for like rappers like Big Sean or like Snoop Dogg or something. Nope, uh, I opened up for five rappers on the east side of Detroit, like to dress like anime characters, rap about anime. They were called the Super Saints, and I like to rap about anime and other bull, like niche bullshit, you know what I mean? And so I get there and sure as shit, there's five big ass black dudes dressed like cartoon characters. Uh, but there's also uh, an eight ball being broken up amongst them. Uh, and, you know, this is the first time I've ever seen cocaine. I don't know how you like to do your cocaine if you do that, but I don't like it when there's like people that are taller than me just doing lines and going, oh, my power levels are increasing. So it's like, ah. Hey Tyrone, that's your heartbeat, bro. Stop it. The last line was pretty heavy, man. You didn't need to do that, right? So, management comes to them. They're like, "Hey, you get yourself and you get your coke out of here, right?" So they leave, and they take their fans with them, right? The manager's like, "Hey, I'll still let you do time, uh, but you got to do it for the people that are in the bar right now." And that is how I did mostly anime jokes 
about 10 minutes worth to 60 black women on the east side of Detroit, you guys. It was not kosher at all. They had just come from a church outing. They were not ready for me, all right? That was like, what's your name, buddy? Kevin. Kevin? Uh, Kevin, you ever fail in front of your own people? An honest man, an honest man. That's good. Uh, yo, you ever you ever fail in front of sixty versions of your own grandma, man? Cause like that shit, that shit sticks to my heart to this day, y'all. Like, look, that was the night that I learned that when a black woman goes, "It's okay, baby. Nothing's okay." It was, it was terrifying. You guys, like right where he's sitting, one of them had this purple church felt hat on, was, you know, like the traditional one. And I could hear, I could hear her breathing from the stage, just. <sighs> dragon guarding its goal, you know what I mean? I was like, ma'am, are you okay? And she went, Dr. King didn't march for this. <laughs> Which is the meanest shit a black person can say to another black person. <laughs> Fuck you doing involving famous people in my failure. It'd be like if you were at the Y and Tom Hanks just strolled in and be like, it's a lazy backstroke. Like, fucking, come on, man. Like, <laughs> trying, man, you know? Yeah, man. I got, about half, I got about five minutes into that shit, and then one of them stood up and started rubbing her chest. She was like, it's okay if you don't finish, baby. Why don't you just tell us about your day or something? I'm like, well, maybe I should tell them about my day. Yeah, so, so I told them about my day, and she was like, ugh, boy, you're too old to play with Legos. I'm like, shit, all right, fine. I can't build? I can't build here? Fine, whatever. Yeah, the best part about that though was when I finally got off stage, one woman grabbed the mic from me, she was like, all right, y'all, give it up for Tanner. That baby tried, didn't he? I mean, I don't know what the fuck he was talking about. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, you guys, uh, I'll say this, I don't look like where I work. Uh, I don't look like where I work. To describe what I look like, um, I was on the Staten Island Ferry three years ago, and some kids behind me were playing a hilarious game called That Nigga Looks Like. You guys are just in time. <laughs> you guys are just in time. Hold on to your butts, white people. Here we go. <laughs> How do you play the game That Nigga Looks Like? You need six black kids who don't give a shit about anybody, you guys. Uh, I mean, hey, it was good writing. I'm not for bullying, but if the writing's good, like there was a guy with a pinstripe suit on the boat, and they were like, ugh, he looked like he said Beetlejuice twice. I was like, ha! <laughs> That was good. That was really good. So then they get to me and they're like, ugh, you look like a turtle or a nigga that want to talk about turtles. I was like, shit, ah. Oh. I fucking love turtles, I love them. It's the best animal ever invented. I'm in my late 20s, I love canceling plans and locking my door. Any animal that just goes, I'm done for today. Like, yo, I'm here for it. I'm here for it, man. That's a good fucking turtle, I love it. It's great. Uh, so I say all of that to say, uh, I work at a gun store, you guys. I sell guns. I don't really sell guns. I basically just point at them like, you want the black one? You know, I was just like, that's what I do. Uh, I don't know, bad thing about working at a gun store, I'll be honest, uh, yo, fat men, you gotta stop buying ankle holsters. You gotta stop doing that. Uh, I know you're trying to be sexy with your drawing shit, but I saw you tie your shoes in the parking lot, man. You can't lie to me. Fuck out of here. If you're fat and you carry on your ankle, your last words are gonna be, God damn it. So just stop it. Just, um, I'll get out of here on this one, y'all. Uh, I, uh, I really bond with my dad. We go to a lot of concerts and stuff. A couple years ago, he went to go take me to see Earth, Wind, and Fire. You guys in Earth, Wind, and Fire, y'all? Yeah, yeah, it's a great show. And at the end of it, he was just like, son, we should go see a band you want to go see. And I'm all about first-time experiences, so I'm like, hey, dad, do you want to go to your first death metal show? And like any black father, he was like, fuck no, I don't want to. no part of that shit. He's like, who are we going to see? I'm like, uh, is, this, is this Canadian death metal band called Skinless? Uh, to describe what Skinless sounds like, it sounds like two bears getting a divorce. It is, it is just, rawr, 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 rawr. Like, it is, you gotta be in a mood and a point in your life to love that shit, right? So, he listens to it, and he's just like, I don't know, son, they seem a little violent. I'm like, look, I'll pay for the tickets, I'll pay for parking, I'll pay for drinks. He's just like, that's my boy, right? So, I pick up my dad from his office. I get my height and my humor from my mom. My dad is like 6'9", 250, you guys. He's a big boy, right? Get to my dad's office. He's wearing a large yellow raincoat. 
in the dead of summer. I'm like, what's the raincoat for? He's just like, it's for the spit. I saw the videos. I ain't about to get spit on. The earth, wind, and fire would never do that shit to me. Right? So we make our way to the concert, and then security stops us because, I mean, shit, it's basically a sea of white children with tattoos and then a black kid with a large black man in a yellow raincoat, you know? Security's looking at the crowd like, yo, what's that Wes Anderson shit right there? What the fuck is that? Right? So they stopped my dad and they're like, hey, sir, you know, that coat's a little hot. You don't really need that for a day. And my dad was like, oh, uh, this is for me? And that's all you need to worry about. And that's the most gangster shit my dad's ever said, you guys. Like, like, you need to understand, my dad, like, he's a weird dude. He likes to garden, he went to private school, he collects flashlights. That's a weird thing. Weird thing. Uh, there's a thing in collecting flashlights called a throw. It's the length and the strength of the beam. And he buys real expensive ones. And so, like, I have PTSD from bright lights because if I was late coming home from high school, he'd be like, what the fuck were you? Like, just, you know. Right? Yeah, man. The flashlights were cool. Y'all remember when we had that blackout in 03? Yeah. Yo, y'all don't know true power until you're the only black family on the block with all the flashlights. <laughs> Woo! Yo, that was the week I found out what my dad would be like if he was a warlord. It was crazy. <laughs> hey, Curtis, you wouldn't happen to have a flashlight, would you? I don't know, Mary. Do you have butter and milk? <laughs> Trying to have a balanced breakfast over here. And we can help each other out, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, my dad brings one of those flashlights to the show, right? And he turns it on, he says, what's that over there? I'm like, that, that's mosh pit, that's where fans of music go and punch and kick each other in the face. <laughs> and he starts running towards the pit, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I gotta go see these white boys hit each other, right? <laughs> Gets in the middle of the pit and the flashlight dies. I don't see my dad, it's dark as fuck, and at that moment, I had what I like to call a Lion King moment. I was like, oh no, my dad's dead, dead because of what I did. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go find his corpse. I'm gonna have to run away out of shame. I'm gonna have to be raised by stoners, start a keto diet. Fucking push my uncle off a cliff and watch his henchmen eat him, you know? I was just like, I couldn't find him. Then I hear my dad just in the, out in the distance. He's like, son, what do I do? I'm like, you hit him back. He's like, I can hit white kids. I'm like, do it, do it now. And he gets up and he looks at his face. He's like, this is why we came here, Curtis. This is why we came here. And my dad Ray Rice them kids. It was over with, dog. God. Oh, it was great. It was great. We got back in the car, I'm like, Dad, you have fun? He's just like, I gotta be honest, I have not hit a white person since 1972. <laughs> yeah, it's still fun. It's still fun. And I'm like a curious person, so I'm like, Dad, who's the last white person you ever hit? He was like, oh, Mitt Romney. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I told you he went to private school. My dad went to Cranbrook with Mitt Romney. Yeah, my dad was Mitt Romney's high school bully, y'all. That's right. He came from those balls. That's right. Cool, cool. Now, when your dad says some ridiculous shit like that, you know, you don't really take it at face value until two years later we went to a Cranbrook fundraiser and who should be there but Mitt Romney, right? My dad goes up to me and he's like, hey man, it's been a while. And then Mitt turns around and says, like, oh, Curtis, uh, hey, you remember when you used to toss my lunch in the pond? You're like, oh, you white, you're white. why don't you go swim and get it, white boy? You know? <laughs> and I did. <laughs> because I wanted my lunch. <laughs> my dad was like, yeah, I, I remember doing that. I remember doing that a lot, yeah. And then it was like, hey, uh, you wouldn't happen to have voted for me, would you? And my dad was like, nah, no. Nah. I voted for Obama to see a black man beat you twice. <laughs> and that's the most gangster shit my dad's ever said. You guys have a good day, see ya. Enjoy the show. You are in for a treat. Your headliner.